So this is actually Ferry Meadows. Ferry Meadows is um, is the start of uh, Kurakram Range. This is a picture near Skardu, which is in. Uh, yeah, I've got people from Kabar um, Pakhtunkhwa. Yes, so these people know it's an uh, area near them, and it's a famous area. Lots of tourists go there, and hopefully, um, um, I'm taking a couple of my friends um, there in July with their families. So hopefully, we have the time there. And if it's successful, then maybe next time when we have the course, uh, we can think about taking a bigger, um, larger number of people over there. And I'm sure the hospitality is great and it's a beautiful area. Um, that's the start of the, uh, the range for Kurakaram um, uh, mountains. And it's an amazing area. So anyway, what is a pedicle? What is a pedicle? Yes, please. What is a pedicle? Medical is what? So it's basically a bone that connects <laughs> or attaches the body to the more dorsal elements. So, so there is a, it's a pillar between the body and the dorsal elements. Itself. So relevantly, we know the body of C1 fuses formally uh, with the dorsal elements of C2 to form the orange so the atlas that's why has no body, nor by definition any pedicle. In C2, in C2, the pedicle is very short and medial, and it is not typically penetrated with C2 uh, pedicle. So it's typically not penetrated at all. So atlas is, uh, we have talked about this anatomy, just briefly going to revise, it's always good for us. Uh, um, and C1 is a ring-like structure formed by two lateral masses interconnected by anterior and posterior arches. So there are only arches going on both sides, like a house, um, uh, which have, it doesn't have roof, doesn't have walls. Uh, it's got no spinous process. The lateral, uh, the superior lateral aspect of each of the posterior arches is a transverse foramen to accommodate the uh, vertebral artery. And this is uh, what you're seeing. And obviously, what we look at, that obviously what, what we have here is basically the articulate and die on both sides, the anterior and posterior arches, and you've got a transverse foramen. I think that's where exactly um, the vertebral artery can go through. C2 is, serves as a transitional vertebra between upper and the uh, craniovertebral junction. A unique feature of axis is the odontoid process. As we know, it extends superiorly from the body uh, to just above the C1 vertebra before tapering to a blunt uh, point. Um, again, I think this is the most important slide if you want to be doing uh, C2 screws, because we, we see this is the portion of the pedicle. So if you're, if you're going to put in a pedicle screw, that's going to be going in like that. If you're going to be putting in a bar screw, it's going to be going straight like that. So obviously you need to understand this, that pedicle is, is a very short start segment um, going immediately at that angle. And if you know that, then obviously uh, you'll be all right. The important thing to remember that the transverse foramen and the space between transverse foramen and pedicle, how far it is, you need to understand. Um, the bar itself is this portion, or this portion, sorry, they've labeled it here, So this portion here. And if you're going to be putting in parts two, this is going to be going up like that. So direction has to be right in order to avoid any vascular injury. So basically, if you revise the same thing on uh, a model, um, and then you see that, so this is this is which way? What kind of screw is that? Pedicle. And what kind of screw is that? Part. So it can be straight or you know, five to 10 degrees immediately, whichever way you want. And if you look at the lateral trajectory, again, so what Joachim was talking about was this screw. So that's uh, basically this screw coming, and uh, transarticular screw. So direction is completely different to C2 parse or C2 pedicle screw. Obviously, it varies as well depending on the patient, and you, uh, you need to review all your CT scans beforehand in order to make the decision. Can I make it? It's a very nice image. You see that there's absolutely also a risk to injury of the vertebral artery when you use that old master. See that? Just point out the if you don't have glasses, then it's possible, but you're going to be wearing glasses. In Pakistan, we do that. Maybe in Germany, you don't. Come on, how many, you know, guys, how many times a vertebral artery is injured if you've looked at scans before, uh, beforehand? It doesn't. In your city, you know, I'm sure there's a high risk. Uh, Sandeep, where is Sandeep? Sandeep was telling me that, you know, um, in some of the places, the risk of vertebral artery, if you're doing C1, um, C2 transarticular, no, Nicolay, Nicolay, sorry. It was nickel. 
Um, that, I told you that in India is a high risk. <laughs> um, Thank you. Look, this, you. You know what you've done. We've discussed this before. So I think your, your uh, procedure has got quite a lot of companies. I don't know if I want to do that. Anyway, so <laughs> this is a projection of the pedicle. So the pedicle, um, so they're going to come in like that. But is it, when they're going for transarticular, obviously our projection is going to be going up like that. Um, just a quick revision. So, what ligament is this in the middle? Anterior longitudinal ligament. And what's this ligament joining this here? What is what ligament is that? Okay, so it's it's an anterior membrane which is on the joint itself. Uh, so ligaments which we, are, we, we have talked about, there are certain ligaments which are important, there are certain which are unimportant, they're internal and then are external. So, and we know the two important ligaments uh, Greg talked about yesterday were, were? Yeah, so the two important ligaments are transverse and LR. So it's important for us to know. So LR ligaments are these two that are going, and which ligament is this? Yes. So I think we need to continue to revise, and if you keep revising, you'll remember them. It's, it's good. Virtual artery, obviously, course, we have been, it was shown very nicely twice yesterday. So I don't need to really go through it. Um, somebody asked me about what goes through the C7 foramen. Only vein. Okay, vertebral vein in about 95% of the patients, and 5%, nothing goes through it. So, but generally speaking, our concern when we are putting in uh, screws is where exactly vertebral artery going. And you need to know how big, how, how small the particle is there is. So that could, you could have a normal vertebral artery, a tortuous vertebral artery. And it's important if you're trying to put in a screw somewhere here, if this course comes in here, and then you can injure while trying to drill something here or put in a screw at that, that level. Um, so I think it's important to know that vertebral artery comes around, moves up, uh, comes back up, and then um, enters and goes up. Uh, the C2 nerve root, as you can see, is divided into two. And you know, then it comes out of the dura after the ganglia. So, uh, where exactly will you take the C2 root, Greg? If you're going to take the C2 root, where would you, at what level? Where would you take it? Take it medial of the dorsal root ganglia. Yeah. Why, yeah. guys? Why? The role of formation and pain. Okay, that's important. So, if you're going to take it, it has to be medial. Um, occipital fixation. Quite simple, we know that this is the thickest spot um, in the middle, uh, so we need to put, in, if you're gonna put in screw, the mid midline screw is probably the best. Lateral fixation has got less lateral banding, but the problem is then it's a very small screw. So uh, this is the area which is supposed to be the thickest, so that's where your screw should go. Uh, C1, C2 joint, um, uh, we know the transverse ligament helps control and stabilize. So it's the transverse ligament which is really holding C1, C2 joint together. And here we have got rotation uh, like this, and it's coupled with slight extension. These are the two um, uh, areas that's important. Um, uh, Greg, you're talking about biomechanics, yes? So, I, I will. So I, 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 I'm going to move forward then. Um, maybe, maybe not what you wanted to talk about, but okay. I'm covering some new stuff. Okay, uh, so C1, C2, um, Noel actually described the plate, and Tom just added lab. Um, uh, uh, rods to it and so both of them uh, go simultaneously and you can use uh, whatever. For uh, the residence perspective, uh, this is what we're going to do in, in the uh, lab. A patient is patient position prone, we don't have a Mayfield but we're just going to position a patient like that. Yeah, keep the uh, neck as neutral. Why do you want the neck neutral? Okay, again, it depends on the pathology that you're dealing with. But if it's a central fracture, then obviously neutral neck is okay as long as things are reduced. But if you're trying to reduce or the pathology is different, you can change accordingly. <clears throat> and so it's military drug position, and the arms are tucked on the side, shoulder retracted quarterly, you put tapes and retract. Midline incision is given, so we, we expose C2, uh, C3 facets, and the dorsal um, arch of the C1 is exposed, C2 nerve is identified. So it's either um, you can push it down, and the way to push it down is put a little bit of gel foam or a sponge stand or surgery cell or, or whatever you have, and then put a patty on it, retract it down, and then if it's not too thick, and if it's, there is distance there, you can get away with it. But if you want to be using the joint to put in something in the joint, you'll have to take it uh, um, and, and sacrifice it. 
The medial wall of the C1 lateral mass is identified. Um, use the forward uh, angle thread or some kind of uh, hook and make sure that you know where the medial wall of the lateral mass is. And the medial aspect of the transfer element of C1, C2 can be identified as well. And that's your lateral limit of your screw placement. So these are the two limits you need to know. And if you look at this, so you're gonna put a, a blunt hook or some kind of a thread here to make sure you know medial and lateral wall. And then you know you can decide where how exactly you're gonna go. And obviously, your, and this is how you can reflect the C2 root down. And it's usually the center of the uh, uh, lateral mass itself where we're gonna go in from. And uh, sometimes you need to drill a bit of the bone, which is overhanging, but you have to make sure that the vertebral artery is intact. And obviously, you need to look at the scans beforehand to be certain that what you're doing is right. Again, the angle, if you see here, so it's about 15 to 20 degree um, depot. And if you're looking at how far medially it's coming, so it's about uh, um, varying from 15 degrees to 40 degrees, but depending on uh, what exactly we're doing and where exactly is our entry point, and it varies. Um, C1 lateral mass is C2 pedicle screws if you're doing that. So this is the goal, that's what he described, and Tom described with, um, with the rod, and makes it just like much easier for us. So entry point, we just described. So which, what is the entry point? I just said. Okay, midpoint of what? Where exactly? All the way up, all the way up to the top, but in the middle of the lateral mass. And obviously, then your direction is going to be. Entry point, uh, if I the center of C1 lateral mass, um, if I'm going to ignore this. And what about the, although runs in a sulcus on the superior lateral aspect of the C1 arch and care should be taken to avoid drilling in this area. It's because of overhanging um, uh, C1 uh, that can cause problems. So you have to be careful. You need to look at that beforehand. So this is what you need to look at and know exactly what you're doing. This is the drilling you're talking about, but we don't want uh, <clears throat> the artery to be injured on the opposite side. So if you look at the screws, C2 power screw, um, <clears throat> this is um, the portion of the C2 vertebra between superior and inferior articular surface, just like in the lumbar spine. And um, placed in the trajectory similar to uh, Yoakum's transarticular screws. Um, the entry point for C1 power, C2 parts is 3 millimeter rostrum, so coming down, and 3 millimeter lateral to the anterior medial aspect of the anterior articular surface of C2. So it's quite simple uh, when you're putting in parts screws. And um, often there is a trajectory of 40 degrees or more that needs to be followed for the parse groups. Um, and it lies at the junction of facet and laminage and should be directed towards the C1 tubercle. And for that, obviously, you need the imaging. And without imaging, you shouldn't be doing this procedure at all. Uh, trajectory is achieved through an incision um, extending down to C4 without using a percutaneous stab, or you can have a percutaneous stab. The screws are passed to the 10 degrees of medial angulation, as we had shown earlier. And the screw is somewhere between 12 to 18. In our part of the world, it's probably 14, uh, 16. Um, whereas uh, if you've got somebody like Greg, obviously you need to put probably 20. Um, so that stops short of the transfer ceremony. So uh, screw placement for our screws, we have already discussed. Where's the entry point? How far in you're going to go? Um, many a times with C2, now you can put in translaminar screws as well. And I'll be talk about that. Um, C2 pedicle screw is, uh, again, is one to two millimeter below the anterior facet of the cathal vertebra and is directed about 15 to 25 degrees medial. And we saw that the pedicle was small going in medial like that, so that's, what, that's the angle we're going to follow. So again, so if you see here, so C2 pedicle, when you're going in, it has to about 20 degrees medially, um, and the entry point is shown here as we have discussed. Um, sometimes there's a very high riding vertebral artery, and yes, you need to look at, look at that beforehand, you need to know, and there's uh, some hypoplastic pedicles, uh, and we see that, see that quite common in Pakistan, um, uh, and it's important that uh, when you're putting screws, you have to be careful and you think about uh, doing something else for these patients. Obviously, there are advantages of um, uh, this even C2 complex. You can reduce, you, you can, um, you don't comp even with compromised posterior elements, you can put these screws. They're easier to place. Yeah, hardly takes hour, hour and a half. It's, it's nothing major in it. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and you're careful with your handling of instruments, I think it's an easy procedure and it can be done uh, quite easily. Um, and obviously, as I said, it provides feasibility of intraoperative reduction. And almost all atlantoaxial dislocations can be treated by this method. Um, 
I think uh, then there is, uh, um, Joachim has already shown a hook, uh, so this is a double hook method that many people use and say that their results probably are as, same, as similar to um, the, the rules through um, rod through technique instead of a hook. Um, I think its stability is probably the same, but, but biomechanically it may not be that strong. Um, this is um, a, a, one thing I want to show that. Uh, see through the trans laminar screw. I think um, we saw some lovely pictures yesterday of trans laminar screws by uh, our friend, and I wish I had those lovely pictures. I didn't. Um, the screw entry point for trans laminar screws, I use, quite, I use them quite frequently in C7, I use them in um, C2. Some people use them in C1 as well. I don't know how they managed to do that, but I suppose if you've got a big, thick lamina, that big, thick posterior arc, then you can think about doing that. Um, I have um, never tried. But um, in C2, um, I do that quite often, but because many a time the pedicle in Pakistan is not as big as we want to uh, put in. And our screws are much bigger than the pedicle size. So the entry point for C2 um, is basically where the spinous process and lamina meet. So that's the root. Um, where we work, that's our entry point. And obviously what you need to do is one is slightly higher and posterior and the other is slightly lower and anterior. And you can put in about 28 millimeter screws um, without any problems. So you've got, what we do is we, we start with one side, so one is superior and um, anterior, and it goes all the way. So it's not as short as this, it goes all the way um, um, to the end of the lamina. And so that's why you can easily put in two and a half centimeter of um, screw in there. And it's quite um, easy to put in. Uh, you don't need an image intensifier. You just need common sense and you need to know where your lamina is and where, the, where your entry points are and your two screws do not collide. Um, and if you do that, then it's quite easy. I have yet to see a problem with the trans laminar screw, um, but I think not many people are using it. But I think when more and more people may be using it, then it's possible that we may see serious issues. Any problems with trans laminar screws? Uh, I haven't. Um, you know, originally, people said, oh, you can't get a arterial artery with it. But uh, I saw one of my partners film where the was within a millimeter of the of the birth because the angle of the lamina is not, not prohibitive of getting getting the vertebral artery. But it's it's been okay. We know that biomechanically, this is probably the, the strongest construct in flexion and extension and, and maybe even rotation. And that, that came out of a, the lab in our department. Yeah, I, th I think I agree that biomechanically, uh, <laughs> it's as strong as um, a pedicle screw. That's, that's been shown. So if that, and that's why more and more people are using it, but it's much safer screw to put in. Uh, but you, you, know, you have to be careful. Uh, um, you have to study your images beforehand. Advantages, you know, that is, as Greg said, there's a faint chance of vertebral arc injury. Um, stability similar to pedicle screws due to larger diameter C2 lamina can be used where other screws uh, may be contraindicated or difficult to put in. There is no fluoroscopy required. You know, you can give it to even uh, residents who are not too senior. Um, it's um, biomechanically supposed to be inferior to pedicle screws um, in a couple of studies. Uh, it's difficult in connection sometimes with C1 lateral mass, but since I don't do the connection, so I don't know how difficult it is. Aman and Mohsin, how difficult it is? Because these guys put in the wrong so I don't know how difficult it is. And post-operative laminar fractures have seen in some cases, you know, if you're trying to put in two biggest screws and you try to rotate in between, you can cause problems. But obviously you need to um, check that all the patency of all four walls are intact. Any questions?